The city's very angry, Nadine's very angry that her proposal didn't get rubber stamped by the continuum of care. We have people on the street right now, and all of them lose in this political battle. Tensions are high right now as city officials are working to find a location for a new homeless shelter in Spokane after the process was forced to start over because of a conflict of interest. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin now with our continuing coverage of the city of Spokane's plan to try and find space for an additional homeless shelter. City Council members held a study session today to discuss establishing a criteria for future low barrier shelter spaces. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley said in on that meeting. She shares highlights from that discussion with us tonight. This proposed shelter criteria is the brainchild of Spokane City Council President Brian Beggs and Council Member Lori Kinnear following testimony from Monday night's City Council meeting. Now the criteria includes six elements which are subject to change after this afternoon's discussion. According to the draft version of this resolution, this is the proposed criteria for future low barrier shelter spaces in Spokane. It includes limiting the daily shelter bed space to 120, but allow for surge space during extreme weather events. A dedicated space on site for local resources to help people transition out of homelessness and a provision for 24-7 security. It is not meant as a final copy, it's meant to elicit conversation. In Council's conversation today, Councilmember Michael Cathcart expressed concerns with limiting the shelter beds to 120. We would need at least three of these to address the the illegal camp in East Central and have an opportunity for those folks to move to a different location. I don't know where you're going to find three shelters in the next few weeks. Uh, and so I think that that puts us in a really bad position. The Trent Avenue shelter site was estimated to provide 250 beds. Cathcart believes that site could address the need for housing for those staying at Camp Hope. But some council members believe that's too many people at one site. Yeah. That is what we were hearing was People don't want to be jammed in, and we've seen two failures already with HOC and with the convention center. No action was taken on this resolution today. In fact, the proposed criteria may change based on discussion from council members. The hope is, though, to bring this resolution to a vote soon. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. So we will certainly keep you posted as that process continues. In the meantime, we want to send things out to Jeremy Lagoo, chief meteorologist, as he is here back in the studio. He just went outside for a quick check of the weather. So I'm hoping that the rain has stopped because we know that what comes after the rain is going to be really, really good for the next few days, right? I know. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, we are seeing some breaks in the clouds, but in some places, those breaks in the clouds are helping to fuel a little bit of thunder and lightning. It's a true story. We'll walk you through it. Temps right now sit at 51 degrees here in town. It's a cool 51 degrees. I was just outside going, yep, feels kind of cool. Wind out of the southwest at about 15 miles per hour. And temperatures pretty close to 50 in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, and even up in Sandpoint. Close to 60 in Wenatchee and Moses Lake. And look at that sunshine there already. But we do have a few spots where we're seeing some of those scattered showers. Notice what's going on just north of Highway 2. Pretty interesting. Let's dive in and take a closer look. That is lightning registering there. Now those cells are moving into Grand Coulee and Nespelum. We'll be getting some of that action as well. Hear any thunder and lightning? No concern about severe weather, but just know it's still possible. The showers remain scattered into this evening and then clear out overnight, making way for a beautiful Friday ahead. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Well, it came a little later than many fans expected, but Gonzaga's Chet Holmgren has officially declared for the NBA draft, which means he will not be returning to GU for his sophomore season. In his announcement, which came on social media, Holmgren wrote, it's always been his dream to play in the NBA. He thanked all of his trainers and coaches who helped him work toward that dream. Holmgren lives or leaves Gonzaga rather tied for the most blocks in a single season at 117. And Holmgren wasn't the only Zag to declare for the draft. Andrew Nemhard also announced on Twitter that he is declaring for the draft as well. He's had an extra year of eligibility because of COVID-19, but is electing not to take it. In a tweet, he said he is thankful and blessed to be a part of the team with so much success. He also said nothing compares to the relationships he's made over the past two years. That, he says, will last a lifetime. 
Turning now to some of the other top stories of the day, the Spokane Fire Department is on a hiring spree. It's hoping to make up for a shortage that has been exacerbated by the pandemic, including the vaccine mandate. Crem 2's Cody Proctor spoke with fire officials today. She's joining us now live with more. Hi, Cody. Hi, Whitney. The Spokane Fire Department is looking to hire 40 new firefighters. That 40 could end up going a long way to closing the shortage gap for the department. According to Spokane Fire Department Fire Chief Brian Schaefer, the 40 positions make up about 10% of the 379 positions the fire department has budgeted. There's a lot of factors behind the shortage. According to Chief Schaefer, the pandemic played a big role in that. And before that, there was no academy while they waited on the results of the public safety levy. Chief Schaefer says once it passed, they had a hiring process. However, he goes on to say that fell right at the beginning of the pandemic, meaning they couldn't bring the new hires on for a year. All throughout that time, we've had people leaving due to retirement. Um, also from the governor's mandate, we've lost a number of people. Chief Schaefer says a number of the unvaccinated firefighters were hired back into accommodated positions, many of which were in the fire marshal's office and in the dispatch center. In the meantime, the shortage has taken a toll on the department with firefighters getting overtime to pick up the slack. Right now, Chief Schaefer says the fire department does have 18 in the academy at the moment. The next group in the academy after that would be for the 40 positions that are being sought after now. In the newsroom, Cody Proctor, Crime 2 News. All right, Cody, thank you very much. Well, a man who was a, or the family of a man who was allegedly killed by a convicted murderer two years ago is now speaking out only with Creme 2. Police believe Nathan Beal killed Andrew Bull for practice four months before he killed his ex-wife, Mary. Now, at the time of the murder, all we knew about Andrew Bull was that he was experiencing homelessness. But recently, his family reached out to us here at Creme 2 saying he was so much more. They say Bull was the oldest of three siblings and was always willing to put others before himself. And while they can no longer hold their brother, his siblings say they are holding tightly to their memories of him. He would give you a hug and then tap you three times on the back. So it's kind of his thing that we called the Andrew hug. And I don't know, he was a very loving person. And I don't know, piece of me left me when he passed away. Losing a sibling is not the best feeling at all like I think about him every day I look up in the stars and I know that he's looking down on me and my, my little girl Andrew's alleged killer Nathan Beal is expected to go to trial in June his family says they are hopeful for justice Meanwhile, the Idaho Transportation Department is hosting an open house tonight to give drivers an overview of a big construction project that will be happening on US 95 this summer. It's going to be impacting drivers going in or out of Sandpoint on the Long Bridge. Work is scheduled to take place between Sagal Road and Lakeshore Drive. The open house is tonight from 430 to 630 at the Northern Lights Building in Sagal. Organizers say they will not have a formal presentation, but this is just to give residents the information they need about the projects and answer any questions they may have. A new documentary about the Spokane-born former Speaker of the House, Tom Foley, is premiering tonight. Political commentator Chris Matthews will be at the premiere. It's happening right here in Spokane. So Matthews, who actually narrated the entire documentary, is going to be joined by Tom Foley's widow, Heather, as well as Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward. The premiere is tonight at 6 at the Riverside Place Event Center in downtown. The Spokane Symphony announced its upcoming season this morning. It's going to be the Symphony's 77th season performing here in the Lilac City. The 2022-23 season will feature nine Masterworks concerts, five Pops concerts at the Martin Woldson Theater at the Fox, as well as numerous other events. Music director James Lowe also announced he has extended his contract with the orchestra for three more years. The season starts in September. Tickets can be purchased on the Spokane Symphony website.